Hi there everyone and welcome to a what is probably going to be a rather ambitious video. In this video I would like to try and impart as much of my knowledge onto or particularly new tankers as to how the Henglong RX-18 works and how it's changed over time and the Tajin controller as well. Okay, um, so I'm going to run through the basics of how they all operate and hopefully by the end of the video you'll be a whiz on both the Henglong controller and the Tajin controller. Okay, what I'm going to do, and I'm going to use my Mako board as well, and only using that because it's going to help me um, show you how the systems work. Okay, now first up I'd like to talk about the very first Henglong RX-18 units, and this is one here. Now these units look like this inside, Okay, and, and in my opinion they're probably the best of all the Henglong units. Okay. Um, I had a look, I've gone around and looked for some of my older Henglong RX-18s, but I can't find any. So that indicates to me that they've all buggered, they are all <laughs> got broke, and I've tossed them away. The only ones I can find are the old versions. So, you know, I do like these old Henglong RX-18s. They are probably the most rugged of all of the units. Um, that's the underside. This is one that's featured on one of my forum posts because this is how we used to stop the track recoil um, by soldering onto the bottom of the boards there. But the beauty, the real beauty of this board, particularly for, and also this um, video will probably be more suited to IR battle, IR tankers. Um, yeah. So, yeah, bear that in mind as well. It's probably a big strong focus on IR, as you can see, I've got the IR apples on there. What I like about the early, early, early RX-18s is that they did not rely on the micro switch. Now, probably if you've listened to any of my wafflings on, you'll hear me talk on and on about this micro switch. But um, basically, with the old RX-18s, when you hit the fire button, as you can see, I've got nothing connected on this port here, nothing is connected in, in that port there. So there's no micro switch connection, nothing. So when you go to fire your tank, okay, the fire happens. I've turned the volume down low, so um, yeah, it's not overpowering, but when I fire, okay, you, you can hear that the sound goes off straight away. Um, there's a fire sound. So that's what I like about those. So if you've got one of these controllers, they do not require a micro switch in that port. Now what about, what's this micro switch? Now, on the back of the tanks you'll get today, right, you'll have your, your gun unit like that and then you'll have that little micro switch situated on the back there, okay? Now what happens as this recoil motor comes back, just before it abets the fire, it trips this micro switch and causing it to close to ground. Now, the reason Henglong and Tajin have done that was to sync the gunfire sound to the firing of the BB projectile. So if you can go back to this unit for one last time, unmodified, when I f went to fire, I go straight away on the fire button, okay, the sound happens straight away. As you know with your BB unit, it takes a while for the BB to wind up before it's shot. So if I had a BB unit connected to this, you'd hear the gunfire, then about a second or so later, the ball will shoot. To put the sound in sync with the shooting of the BB, Hanglong and Tajin came up with this idea. This micro switch idea was to sync the sound, the gunfire sound with the firing of the BB. As this unit comes back, just before it is ready to fire, this micro switch is closed and that triggers the sound on the RX-18 units. And now remember these are the modern units and the Tajin units. So we'll move on to the Tajin unit just quickly. Okay. And I'll show you that. I'll just... Um, yeah, okay, we've got lots of stuff going on here, so I just want to make sure... There we go. 
Now, it's a bit of a spaghetti. Okay, so this is where the micro switch plugs in. If I remove that micro switch plug, right? So there's no micro switch there. When you fire your Tajan tank, you go to fire. You see, as you guys know, nothing will happen. That is because the Tajan unit and the later model RX18s, particularly the, the 2.4 gig model, requires this micro switch so those things can be synced. So now I don't have a micro switch connected up to here, so I'll just plug that back in. A mod I suggested many, many years ago was to simply use your gun motor return to activate a relay. Now all this relay is doing, it is mimicking this micro switch. Okay, so that's what this relay does. So, if you take out your BB unit and you want to install, say, a... I've got one here handy. A, say, a servo-assisted recoil, you'll probably have lost your micro switch. So if you were just to do that and plug it all in, you'll end up with your Tajin or your modern Henglong not working. You've got to replicate that micro switch. So you can do that in a number of ways. You can probably physically put in a micro switch or you can add in a relay. Now, I do have a link to how this is done um, on one of the forums. At, uh, once I've plugged that in, I'll just turn you, there we go. And now I fire. Okay, you can see the relay is acting as the micro switch to give me my firing sound. Because a lot of people, when they've they've got um, some products, they'll say, oh, the firing is not working. I've When they want to go from BB to IR, and they forget about that how critical that micro switch is. You will not get any firing, as you can see, I'll bring this back in here, you will not get any firing unless there is a micro switch replication on this port. I actually physically plug in, oh no I can't because I haven't got that. But anyway, you'll just have to believe me that if I was to physically ram this in there and physically touch this connection, I would get the firing of the gun. Now, so we'll put that back in. Sorry, this video is going to be long, I might have to edit it. Okay, now the other thing that we need to remember, now we'll start talking about IR, is the Tajan IR signal system, the Henglong IR signal system, and the Tamiya IR system are all different which is why many, many years ago, I built this. This is the first Mako prototype. Okay, now, the concept behind Mako was, was just very simple. All it was meant to do was to convert the Henglong, because Tajin weren't even around, I don't think, when uh, Henglong first came out, was to convert the Henglong system to battle with the Tamiya system. Okay, that's all it did, and you were to, you plugged it in to this port. So basically, you would just simply unplug that, plug your existing IR system into the output of Mako, and then the input got plugged into your RX18. Okay, didn't do anything else and it worked very really well with this system because as you saw before it fires automatically no need for the micro switch so what I'm going to do now keep it try to keep an eye on the video okay here is a Mako board now I'm going to plug the Mako board in and hopefully when we fire our IR at our Tajan system the two will be able to talk to each other okay so, silly me, I don't even have a Mako cable with me. Just have to run off and that's a bit. Well, I'm just <laughs> going to have to pause the video here. No, no, there it is. Getting old. Okay. So, we plug Mako into the 
into the unit. Now the other thing too with your Hanglong and Tajin system is that they did not don't have these these LEDs that will flash whenever you're hit. So that was one of the first things also added to Mako was this these indicator LEDs. Right? So we can add those in. Now they, they are separate. Now you cannot just buy one of these blue rings and put it onto the on, onto your RX18 because there's no function on the either the RX18 or the Tajin units to have indicator LEDs. So, okay, so you need a maker or some other unit to do that. So we'll pop that on there. The five pin plug, we'll be using that. It just goes back in here. Right. Now, as you can see, the blue ring has to connect to a separate spot. So it connects separately there on, on Mako. So we have that system there. Now, hopefully, otherwise I'll have to edit the video, when we, or I haven't set this up right, now when we fire our Tajin tank at our Heng Long, the maker will interpret the signal and cause the Heng Long to be hit. Look at that. Okay. I haven't wired anything up wrongly. So, anyone concerned about not operation with the uh, with any of these systems? Here it is on video. Tajin system, Henglong system, fire the Tajin system, bring that into here. So you can see, fire, and it will result in a hit on the Henglong system. This is 12 minutes already, so I might have to break this video up into parts. So, what the maker has done here, it has translated the signals, so now these signals can talk to each other. Okay, I'm going to break this video here, so we'll go on to part two. I don't want the videos to go on longer than 15 minutes. If you've stayed this long, great. Stay tuned to part two, because part two is really where it's going to get interesting and um, really where a lot of people, um, yeah, fall down when they um, get to modifying their systems. Okay, so as I said, end it here and stay tuned for part two. Thank you.